I made a video about a month ago showing some things that you could do to actually get good at the strongest battlegrounds, but I wasn't super happy with how I got my points across. I didn't have a script or anything, so it seemed pretty unorganized and messy. Let me show you the most important parts of getting good. Movement is 90% of the game. You can learn and practice the nastiest, meanest combos in the game, but you have to be able to actually land those combos. Your front dash isn't going to cut it. Lots of the player base have already adapted to raw front dashes, and nowadays you're just asking to lose if you just do it willy-nilly. I'm not saying front dash itself is bad, because it's definitely not. It has its uses, but I'll get to that in a bit. Staying still in one spot is not a good idea. It's best to keep moving around so you're not a sitting duck. No matter how good you are, you're gonna have to move around at some point. As you're moving around, a good thing to do is to jump frequently. It makes your next move more unpredictable, and it can help with some attacks that have smaller hitboxes like Explosive Shuriken, which you can actually jump over if you time it right. Jumping is also good for masking a quick side dash, which I'll talk about now. Side dashing is one of the most important movement techniques in the game. PC, mobile, and console can all do this, but with varying degrees of difficulty. The sensitivity on console makes it a lot harder, but it's possible. On mobile, it's pretty much the same as PC. There's different types of side dashing, but the most common one is a punch plus a side dash to the left or right. All you do is turn your camera towards the back or side of the opponent as you perform the side dash plus punch. This works on the vast majority of the player base, but the more skilled players have already developed their tracking skills enough to the point where they're able to follow you as you side dash, and that allows them to block your punches sometimes. One more side dash trick that you probably already know about is side dashing with uppercut and down slam. These are good for starting combos, although I'd say that the uppercut variant is a lot more inconsistent. Performing all of these side dash tricks can help start combos. Side dashing isn't the perfect technique though. It's pretty predictable depending on who you're fighting, so try to figure out the other player's movement patterns and you might just be able to predict where they're gonna side dash to, which can then allow you to punish them. If they keep side dashing to the right, try blocking early on your right. If they keep side dashing to the left, then try blocking early on your left. I personally deal with side dashes in two ways. I predict and block the side dashes like I just mentioned, and then I mainly predict and punish side dashes by side dashing right after my opponent does. Now for front dashing. Of course, front dashing from a medium distance in a straight line is a classic rookie move that you should never do. Front dash is better utilized close up. Some examples are uppercut into front dash, straight up just front dashing up close, front dashing close up with turns if you think the opponent has poor tracking, and front dashing to combo extend or end. I probably missed a few, but the main thing to take away from this is front dash is very punishable if used wrong, and even when it's used well. If someone is trying to go behind you with a front dash, this is where good player tracking comes in handy. Keeping your eyes and your screen on the opponent at all times is very important. Backdashing is something a lot of higher tier players abuse. The first few frames of backdash give you iframes. Iframes are moments in the game where you're mostly invincible to attacks. They happen during certain movements or attacks and they last for a certain amount of time. When a higher tier player is in a close up side dash battle or something of the sort, they will spam backdash so they can avoid your side dash and punish it. Backdashing is also good for running away from someone who's trying to fight you up close. Jumping isn't as important as the rest of the stuff I've mentioned, but it's still pretty useful. I personally jump a lot to mask my movements like side dashing, since it just makes you more unpredictable. There's also those lucky situations where you somehow jump over attacks. There are certain attacks that lack a good vertical hitbox, and when timed well, can be jumped over. Using your evasive correctly is pretty simple once you take 5 minutes to understand a few things. Don't evasive off the end of attacks that don't allow the opponent to combo, like normal punch or a blocked flowing water for example. These attacks send you far away from your opponent, so there's no point in using your evasive because they can't reach you in time before you get up. Using your evasive at the right time is difficult at first, but once you keep thinking about it the right way, you can get good at it pretty quick. When you get knocked down or thrown up by an attack, that one second of freedom to evasive could mean your victory. You have to take notice of how your opponent fights, and then you can predict what they're gonna do when you get ragdolled. There's a high chance that they might downslam, for example, so then wait for the right time to evasive in a way that lets you punish them. A lot of this game involves adapting to your opponent's movements and predicting what they're gonna do next. On the surface, it looks like there aren't that many fighting mechanics in the game, 
and you'd be right. But that's not what's important, it's how the players use those mechanics. Some people will start doing the craziest movement and you won't even understand what they're doing, when in reality they're just doing an advanced side dash technique or back dashing in super close range to try to confuse you. Something I don't think a lot of people realize is that not all of the M1s are the same. M1s are the basic punches that each character has. They're used to start combos, side dash punch, and more. But they're not all the same. The only thing about them that's identical is that the hitboxes are all exactly the same. Their differences are pretty major and can change how you play with each character. You can still side dash punch and do all of the fancy movements, but you have to take certain things into account. Each character has different M1 styles and speeds. Most characters can do things like side dash punching pretty easily, but with characters like Brutal Demon, you have to change up the typical timing you'd use with any other character because the M1s are so slow. Slow M1s also prevent you from doing important things like M1 trading which is trying to M1 someone who you are currently blocking M1s from. Their M1s might be faster than yours, and when you unblock to try to punish them, your M1 speed makes it impossible to trade. Your entire playstyle can also be affected by M1 speed. You won't be able to play as quickly as a hero hunter or the strongest hero player when you're using Brutal Demon or Destructive Cyborg. Something neat is that some of the characters have M1s that pair with their attacks a lot better than others. Hero Hunter, Destructive Cyborg, and Brutal Demon all seem to be built to combo off of their M1s. All of this just goes to show how different characters actually are from each other and that you need to learn each of them individually. The basic playstyle of the game can carry over to all of them pretty well, but they do some things that you have to take into account. I can't leave this video without showing you some techniques that you can use for some of the characters. If you've been around for a bit, you'll know what most of these are, but if you're new, then these might help you. With the strongest hero, you can use the shove attack in a few ways. You can do the easiest technique, which is three M1s, shove, then M1 immediately after to knock the opponent down. After doing this, you can use uppercut on them. You could also try front dashing immediately after to cancel their ragdoll, but it's not very reliable. If you do one or two M1s, then you shove and M1 immediately after the shove, the knockback from the attack will be cancelled out. With this, you can side dash and perform a true combo. Front dash and shove used to be a true combo, but it no longer is, and that's why these techs are pretty useful. I think Hero Hunter has the most known techniques. First, there's the Hunter's Grasp cancel, which is performed by using Hunter's Grasp on a ragdolled player, then M1-ing immediately after. You can side dash to 100% confirm a true combo after it, or you could just play with your luck and simply walk forward while using M1s. This tech will not work on a player that's standing up. Hero Hunter's fourth M1 makes the player go up a little bit before falling down, and you can use this to front dash shortly after landing the 4th M1 to cancel their ragdoll and potentially start a combo or combo extend. With Destructive Cyborg, you can turn your camera away from the player at the last kick from machine gun blows, and most of the time it'll catch the opponent off guard and you can combo extend. While you're using M1s on your opponent, you can turn your back to the player and use the first part of the second move, Ignition Burst, then turn back and aim the second half of it to maximize the amount of damage you do. If you want quick and easy damage, Cyborg's 4th M1 confirms 3 out of the 4 attacks, excluding machine gun blows. There aren't that many techniques with Deadly Ninja. You have to resort to playing in an unpredictable way because most of the attacks can be blocked or evaded super easily if you just use them raw. And Brutal Demon doesn't have that many techniques either, and I think the same idea as Deadly Ninja applies here. It mainly involves successfully stringing attacks together, as Brutal Demon isn't exactly the most consistent character in the game. Blade Master is a newer character, so there's barely any techniques for it as well. There are some neat things you can do with it though. You can jump before using Pinpoint Cut to perform an air variant that goes through block and allows you to combo if performed correctly. These are just the techs that I know about and I can't really reveal everything I know because a magician never reveals his biggest secrets. And don't expect everything you saw here today to instantly work on your first try. You have to practice to get better. I think this would be obvious. That's all. Go play the game now. Goodbye.